this video, we're going to prove the theorem that regular languages are closed under the union operator. Basically, in the last video, we showed that we can take an NFA and push it to a DFA, so they're equivalent, and we know that all DFAs are equivalent with regular languages. So if we can construct an NFA that accepts the union operator, then we'll know that it's regular for any of the NFAs that we create. So we're going to start by imagining we have two machines. So these are NFAs, they're M1 and M2. They have their own states, alphabets, assignment functions, and everything like that. So what we want to do is we want to create a new machine. And what we want this machine to accept is going to be everything in M1, union M2. So in other words, the language that we're going to get uh, is going to be a language that accepts basically everything that machine one accepts and everything that machine two accepts. So how are we going to do this? And we'll call this, I don't know, N or something for a new machine. What we're going to do is for this proof for machine construction, we're going to create a new start state and we're going to get rid of the old ones. So what this is going to allow us to do is this is going to allow us to do the unions right away. We have a new start state, and we're going to send each of these to the old start states. So the old start states there, which according to these would be Q1 and Q2, and we're going to transition to these with the empty string. So now what's going to happen is we can either go to machine one or we can go to machine two at the start of every single string. So this is going to let us get everything in M1 and everything in M2. So formally, we need to define this new machine. So if we call this whole thing, let's just put this in a square here. So it's not gonna be the nicest square. In fact, let's try that again. And then let's call this N. So what is N gonna have? Well, let's define N. We're gonna keep this picture up. It's still going to be a five tuple. We're just going to call this Q sigma uh, delta. Let's not give it a subscript, just delta. We'll start with Q0 as the new start state and then F. And here's how we're going to define it. So Q is going to be everything that is in M1. So it's going to be Q1, union, everything in M2, Q2. And we're also adding a new start state. So we're adding in Q0. So that would be this bad boy right here. So that is what that Q0 is referring to. That's the new state we're adding. Uh, in terms of the alphabet, this is just going to be the alphabet of one, union the alphabet of two. That's another point we're going to have. Uh, we're going to do the transition state last. So Q0 is the start state. That's going to be the one thing that we establish that will be new. Um, all of the old start states will no longer be start states. Uh, and then for the accepting states, so we're going to call this F, this is just going to be equal to the union of F1 and F2. So any of the starting states in machine one or in machine two. Now for the transition function, this is where things get a little bit more complicated. So I'm just going to get rid of this and leave this image on the screen so we can take a look at it. So for a transition function, what we're taking is we're taking a, a node state and then we're taking an input. What we're going to get is going to depend on where we're going because we still have some machines that we want to take care of from before. So for example, if we're in say machine one, we want to use the old transition function that we have. So we want to use the old transition function. In fact, let me make this a little bit smaller. We want to use the old transition function on that state and that input uh, if the state, so let's say a little q, is in q1. So if this is in machine one, I'm going to label this as m1. So this is our m1 condition. If it's going to be in uh, machine two, our state, then we want our transition function for machine two to work. 
this satisfies the M2 conditions. So basically at this point, we have our M1 and M2 covered. What we need to do now is figure out our transitions for the beginning. So there's two things that we can do for this. So if, and let's start with the condition first, we'll leave this in a different color. So let's say that if we're starting at our initial state, so we'll put a condition. So if our starting state that we're at for our transition function is Q0, and what's our condition? Uh, our condition is we have the letter is equal to the empty string. So if that happens, then where should we go? Well, we should go to either Q1, that looks like an A, so we should go to either Q1 or Q2. So that's where it should go if we have that condition. Now, what if we have anything else that's happening? So what if we have Q0 and we get something that's not an empty input like B? Well, we don't have anything to account for that in our NFA. It just goes to the empty set. It rejects itself, so we'll send it to the empty set. And now we have constructed a machine that accepts the union. So uh, in this case, we have now proven our theorem that regular languages are going to be closed under the union operator. So if L1 is a regular language and L2 is a regular language, we can construct NFAs for those. We can construct an NFA that accepts the union of both. Therefore, regular languages are also closed under that union operator.